we met a lot of really cool people who were so excited to have their story told and we ended up changing the script based on things they told us because we had done a lot of research but like you know we hadn't met people so that was exciting to meet people and be like oh shit i have an obligation now to tell your story and of course the whole time in your head you're like i'd like to represent you with dignity and I'll do my best, but when you actually meet someone and they're like, no, this is what it's like, you're like, okay, here's the script, rewrite it. I definitely had this, this moment before we started writing, I co-wrote it with the producer of Appropriate Behavior, Tuchelio Frigioli. From the start, it was like, okay, this place what attracts us to this story. And for me, I really wanted to tell a teen story that touched on being feeling truly like an outcast. And there's nothing more heightened than being like a closet homosexual in the South in, oh God, it was, now it takes place nowhere. But a closet homosexual in America when you're living amongst evangelical Christians. I went to rehab when I was in my early 20s. And every time I looked at the group therapy scenes, it reminded me so much of what was going on there. And I remember at the, the feelings in the rooms were like, I just want to get better. I just want to get better. And it was a real hierarchy of like, well, who's getting better? And who's doing the best job of getting better? And at that point, we could really point to what was better. Whereas in, if you were trying to get better and being better was like denying your own sexuality, mm. it's impossible. And I thought, what a cool, <laughs> what a cool thing. No, I thought that was a really amazing situation to explore. And it felt really personal because it felt like my struggle to get better. Desiree um, and I really want to do a lot of research. We actually met with um, a, a bunch of people who actually went through conversion therapy um, from different religions and different backgrounds and the conversations that arose um, you know, through meeting these people and then how it sparked different ideas in, in Desiree and I's mind. And something we kind of, I think, latched on to was the idea that um, we found really poignant in this movie to really show was the interpersonal relationships between the kids in the camp and how, yes, you're under these, you know, horrible conditions and it's really difficult and all these things are kind of raining down on you. But at your core, you're all meeting each other for the first time. You're meeting other gay kids like you for the first time and you're understanding and realizing that you're not alone. Um, and that was really important for us. Um, and we really wanted to make sure that the relationships felt so organic with each person in the film, and especially with Sasha and Forrest, we really wanted to bond and, and kind of create that little pack, um, which it actually happened chronologically almost. Yeah. We all became so close as we filmed it. Yeah, we did form this community. We needed that comfort and that family you needed at that time. And I think as Jane Fonda in the movie, she kind of is that person too, who's like, okay, we got this, we're together. This is our little family. We're gonna make it through this. So that's just what I did outside of that is like, where are you at? Where are you at? This is where we're staying all together, constantly, all the time, and just kept it to make it natural. Yeah, it was like, it was so easy just to like step into it. Just because like you guys are like, we're so cool from the get go. I mean, in the scene and out of the scene, it just felt like natural. And it was like really nice just to, to play around with that energy. Yeah. I play a woman who believes in um, eternal life and. Um, in life ever asked lasting and th uh, for me the way into her was that she is helping these young people because they are denying themselves through no fault of their own because a trauma that happened to them as children and or in their home environment they are denying them they've been denied a chance to everlasting life and um, so I just tried to sort of switch it in my head to so that I wouldn't judge her and to give them the greatest gift that she could possibly imagine giving anyone. Um, so that was my way into her. The thing for my character Rick is that he's gone through the therapy. And so um, looking at all the kids, I think there's actually like a lot of love that he kind of thinks, your struggle is my struggle. And like I, I was there, I was exactly where you were. And that is his way in for a lot of the kids. And the same belief, really the belief that you're doing, that you're doing the right thing with all the kids on set that it's just kind of like, hey guys, we're all, we're all the same. We're here doing the same thing. And so it wasn't that different really between just my approach and the, and the character's approach. Emily plays a character who's sort of like the perfect student there. You know, she's really prayed that gay away. She just wants to be good at what she does and, and be loving and like have friends and have, have a happy life that she thinks that um, 
going through the program will lead her to. Like very by the book idea. Yeah, which I was like as a kid. So I think I had a little bit of a way in. But I've also done a lot of LGBTQ um, work. This is sort of a, a departure from the roles that I normally play. This, the roles I normally play are um, coming into their own and accepting themselves, whereas this character is really trying deeply to deny who she is at her core and her sexuality. So it was really interesting for me. Thank you.